So hi there and welcome to the third video in my Moog Prodigy restoration series. So uh, in the last video I uh, cleaned up all the pots at the back here um, and re-greased them. I ended up actually using a combination of a couple of different greases um, to set the pots at different tensions because some pots um, you want more fine control over than others. You want to move them more slowly and other ones you want to move quickly. So I've changed the tension of the grease to suit each one. So the resonance pot, for example, turns really slowly um, and the master volume turns really quickly. Um, that's um, made them a lot more... Oh, that just fell over. That made them a lot more, um, oh, I guess, suited to their purpose. So today, um, we're going to go through how to uh, replace all the capacitors. In fact, generally speaking, all the bad components. Um, uh, you can see I've got no pots on the board at the moment, so I've got lots of room to do what I need to do. Okay, so to start, um, we'll just go through the different types of capacitors that you will find on, in, in the Moog Prodigy. Um, so all of these in the bottom row are the ones I've taken out and the ones in the top row are the ones that you'll find um, nowadays. Um, so mostly they'll just be um, uh, ceramic discs which are pretty good, they're fairly low leakage um, they don't um, go to very high capacitances but what they do they do well and Mostly you'll find these around the board. Um, you might find a couple of MKTs or some metal film caps. This one's an old MKT that someone must have put on afterwards because um, it was kind of the odd one out on the board. There's a couple of these um, more high quality film caps. Um, I don't know whether they're MKS or MKT or MKP, I don't know. Um, but they're an older format and um, you'll find them definitely in the filter section um, so this is the filter here there's the ladder filter from the, the um, transistors the transistor ladder um, I haven't got exact replacements for these ones yet so I'm leaving them on I've ordered them in um, but all the others are pretty much done um, <clears throat> so besides the metal films um, you'll also get a couple of tantalums, there's maybe five or six tantalum caps on the Prodigy board. They don't use them as much as in the ARP boards. You'll find a lot more tantalums on the ARP. Um, and there's a couple of other weird ones, just metal film, weird, um, like electrolytic film caps and some, action, some axial um, electrolytic caps, which are quite hard to find now. Um, be careful because a lot of the axial electrolytic caps you'll find now are for, built for crossovers and they've actually got two caps in parallel so they're they're non they're, they're not polarized so if you find these caps that aren't polarized um, don't use them because they're the wrong type they need to be polarized um, and just of note um, the Prodigy comes with a few of these um, ceramic um, IC sockets. Um, I guess that's all they had back then. There's no reason to use ceramic. The chips don't get hot enough. Even in the oscillator circuit over here, these two chips are the ones that are heated. They're just standard transistor arrays. A couple of the transistors are used in the oscillator circuit and are really sensitive to temperature. Um, but uh, so they put them in an array and use another transistor in that array as a heater and another one as a temperature sensor. So in the array there's only two that are actually used in a circuit, the rest are just try and um, make it more stable, which is a good idea and the Prodigy's oscillators are much more stable than um, the earlier Moogs. Still sound good too. Um, so there's no reason to have ceramic and uh, I have heard that ceramic uh, can because it's very porous 
um, you can get a lot of moisture and, and stuff building up in here and you can affect um, its ability to insulate um, and when you're talking about oscillator circuits like in the mood that are just such um, high impedance that's just really low currents it's smallest thing can affect them uh, you want the best isolation you can get so the, I've replaced them with the plastic ones which is a really good idea um, <clears throat> Plastic ones can still handle the temperature easily. The chips only get outside to about 30 degrees. Inside on the die, it's 55 supposed to. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, that's nothing for this plastic. Um, and probably any other thing of note is the regulators. Um, they were using the M versions of the regulators, so 78M12 and 79M12. Um, they're only 500 milliamp, they're only capable of delivering 500 milliamps, um, and they're on these big heat sinks. So I've replaced them with the more modern ones, just the 7812 and 7912, and they can deliver a full amp. Um, so there's no reason why Moog wouldn't have done that besides cost. I mean, the board probably only pulls about 300, 400 milliamps on each rail. Um, <clears throat> so... I mean, it's it's overkill using the one amp ones, but they will run cooler and they run more efficiently and they'll last a lot longer. So, um, I mean, it's only a few cents difference these days, so I'll put the best ones in possible. Um, <clears throat> okay, so if we go through the actual replacement of the caps, um, a lot of these discs, the ones that I could find that had equivalents in MKT, I used them because these are much better for audio. Um, so you'll, you'll see on the board a lot of these grey ones, so they used to be old discs. So anything in the nanofarad range um, I've changed to MKTs, which is a much better decision. There's a, a couple of still some old disc capacitors. Uh, oh, these are new ones that I've put in with the black dot on the top. So when I was in the the picofarad range, um, I couldn't find any MKT, so I just used the discs and that's fine. Um, uh, so for other areas of the sound circuit, just a couple of tantalums. Um, there was one up here. You can see the torpedo shape on the circuit board and I've just replaced it with a newer tantalum. I think this one's in the LFO circuit. This one helps the, set the rate of the LFO. So you can substitute here, but you could just get a different range in the um, LFO speed. Mostly I haven't substituted. It depends on where they are in the circuit. There are a couple of these grey ones, which used to be discs, that are just uh, filtering on the power line, on the positive and negative 12 volts. So you can change them to whatever you want. It doesn't matter, um, but I've kept them the same. The only ones I have changed, <clears throat> or it was logical to change them, which is in the power supply. So these big um, axial um, electrolytic caps, um, they weren't very big. They weren't providing much filtering, so I've doubled the size of them. Um, I could have gone much larger, but decided I probably wouldn't because they wouldn't fit on the board that well. So I've gone, this used to be 470 and I'm using about a thousand now. But you can go as high as you want. The higher, the better. It'll just filter better. I've replaced the um, uh, rectifier diodes too. Then what happens is after the rectifier, you go through the regulators, which I've upgraded. And you come out of that and move use tantalums. Um, normally, you'd never use tantalums in a power supply. But after the regulators is probably the only place you would put them if you had the choice. They've probably just done that because of space and tantalums can handle, can have a lot higher capacitance for the same form factor. So you can understand why they've done it, but I mean, I've, if you can fit a bigger electrolytic cap in, just use it. They don't have to be um, low leakage because it's in a power supply, so it doesn't matter. So I've just put the biggest ones I could fit there. Um, and also these two finish off on the output of the power supply. Um, I can't remember what they were. They're probably just discs. I've just used the, the biggest MKTs that I had. Just choose a huge value and put it in if it fits. So more filtering, the better. Um, anywhere else, don't substitute because um, it could be in the audio circuit. 
um, but feel free to check the schematics if you know what you're doing um, a lot of them you can change but um, yeah most of them I wouldn't this red one in the middle is the AC coupling for the um, filter circuit so the two oscillators come in through this um, capacitor and then that's where they enter the filter circuit so I haven't substituted there that was an electrolytic and I've put a, the same value electrolytic in um, it's just about it really what I am going to do I'll have to put the phone down to do it though is um, replace these two tantalums now because I wanted to show you how to remove them and put them back in without pulling the tracks off the other side. So C40 and C42, these are the capacitors that um, create the decay in the ADSR, so in the decay and the release, they're both used for the same one. I think C40 might be the VCA and C42 the VCF or the other way around. Because um, there's two different envelope generators in the MOOC, which is cool. All right, so I'll do that now and um, um, put it on the end of the video. Okay, so let's get those capacitors out first. Um, both of them are the same value. So if I take them out at the same time, um, I'm not gonna get them confused. So they're both exactly the same. Now the important thing is is to make sure that where the where the capacitor has been removed, you've got holes where the pads are. You can't leave solder covering the hole um, because when you try and push the next capacitor in, these pads will be lifted up off the circuit board. Any pushing from the other side will lift those pads up. Um, so always make sure you've got holes before you put the new component in. So you, you just bend the legs so that it matches where the holes are. So then usually I just bend the legs apart a little bit so that the component stays on the board when I turn it over. Lastly, just cut off the legs. So you just make sure that the polarity is correct. Tantalums have a plus sign you can see on the right hand side. Just after the 35, that's the voltage rating. So these are 6.8 um, microfarad, 35 volt. You can see the plus lining up with the plus in the board. That's it, those two are done. Which is good. I can put all the pots back on now. Um, and then on to the calibration. So in the next um, video, I think uh, I'll be doing the calibration. So the voltages and the temperature calibration for the chips in the VCO. All right, thanks for watching.